Caitlin, you're being chased. You gotta get out of there. You're in immediate danger. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome back to Southern Illinois. Today we are going to be visiting a place that is infamous amongst people who like snakes and could possibly be one of the single snakiest places in the United States. Even in these wretched conditions, there's quite a few herpers here. Just to give you an idea of the scale of this place. And, and here's the man himself, Mike Pingleton. Hey, how are you? So Mike, how long have you been coming to Snake Road? Um, well, my first trip here was uh, for a in college in 1977. Uh, I came down, I was taking a, a class called Swamp Ecology. And, this is the place for that. Yeah. So, in Illinois, at least. Yeah. So, I, I and I'd heard about Snake Road, but I'd never been there. So, just first year of college, we came down here, October day. It wasn't raining, but it was, temperature was in the upper 40s. Maybe maybe got 50 degrees that day. Very and, chilly uh, for, for chilly. I had a jacket activity. on, and um, you know uh, what got me is that we were finding uh, snakes everywhere and frogs and, and uh, just lots of cotton mouse and green water snakes and uh, ribbon snakes out crossing the road out in that weather. In that weather, as you know, I mean, I've been snake hunting for a decade at that point, and that's not how we did it back you know we yeah. wouldn't go out on a day like that yeah <laughs> um you stay inside and watch football so that kind of got me it was like the fact that there's this imperative for these things to move uh, whether they like it or not it's time to go up into the bluffs so that was the first trip 77 um i've come down here every year since 1994 so 20 this is my 29th year i haven't missed it in a row 29 yeah. years in a row of coming <laughs> to the snake road yeah all right, so we have arrived at Snake Road, and it is just absolutely pouring rain. So uh, we're probably going to kind of do a little bit of salamandering now. Stick to the shade of the bluff here where it is not soaking wet and actually feels a little bit warmer even over here near this rock. So hopefully we'll see some stuff out, and also hopefully the rain will stop by this afternoon. There is a comical amount of cave salamanders back in there. Look at this. And then right here, there's a mini newt. Oh my God. This is wild. Look at this. <laughs> Look at this. We've got just all the cave salamanders. I'm trying to not step on any snakes because apparently this is a good spot for, for cotton mouths too. Look at these guys. Just an incredibly impressive density of animals here already. Look at that big guy right there. So Mike, what is it that makes this place special and why is it so important for snakes and snake lovers alike? Well, I think it's just the opportunity to um, intersect and interact with um, snakes and other herps uh, while they're on their way to their winter quarters. You have a bottomland swamp on one side as you're filming behind me. And then you have limestone bluffs on the other side and then a road intersects those. And so the road becomes this great stage where you can just kind of walk along and observe the animals as they cross and head, start heading up towards the limestone bluffs. And it, it's kind of special too because it runs perfectly parallel between the, the swamps and the bluff, right? Pretty much, Whereas yeah. in some place, in like other places where you have this type of habitat intersection, a lot of times you have small sections of the road that will will intersect that perfect spot but here the whole road pretty much runs along through that margin and it's a big swamp it's it's 5,000 acres this is the larue pine hills eco uh research uh natural area is what they call it research natural area which is a thing it's a designation yeah. within u.s forest service and because of that the the animals here are afforded a degree of protection correct right right and it also butts up against the uh, shawnee national forest as well so you have a a great deal of, of habitat here still left in place uh, and the animals here obviously are protected and, and uh, uh, are afforded the opportunity just to you know do their thing live their lives. So if you come to Snake Road there's these big signs posted here right at the front that tell you the rules but basically you're not supposed to collect the snakes obviously no tongs no hooks you can get in trouble for having these things on your person even if you don't intend to collect so 
just something to keep in mind if you plan on visiting Snake Road. All right, well, it's still raining, but it's definitely starting to let up. And according to the weather app, we're gonna have at least a couple of hours of clear weather here at the end of the day. So we're gonna give actually walking Snake Road our first attempt now. No, that's a cotton mouth. We did it. We found a snake on Snake Road. There it is. That's the moment we've been waiting for for like a couple hours now while it was pouring rain. <laughs> I'm assuming that's going to be the first of many, but possibly the most common snake on Snake Road, wouldn't you say? Yes. The uh, the cottonmouth, formerly the Western cottonmouth, which is really wild to, to see this snake right next to gigantic limestone bluffs. Well, like I said, I'm, I'm sure we're going to see more of these guys, but it's good to see a snake um, given the conditions we had to deal with today. And like I said, tomorrow is looking a lot more promising, but we have the rest of the afternoon and I think the rain is largely done. So we're going to leave this guy to it and keep walking. Big bluff swamp right there, which gives you an idea of, of why this place is so special and why the snakes are so numerous here, especially this time of year. There you go. All right, we've got our, our next cotton in the bluff. Not a great look at him, but cotton mouth nonetheless, number two. What's that? There's our first rat snake right here next to the cotton mouth. You can see he's way back in there. Not gonna get a good look at that guy, but snakes are out. That's three snakes in the last five minutes. Look at that. That is a beautiful little cotton mouth. Number three, this year's baby. It's a march of the newts. All right, we're, we're getting a little bit crazy here. We've got just two newts that appear to be walking in tandem with one another right here next to the cotton mouth. Well, that is super cool. We are, uh, we're in for it, I guess. This is only the beginning. Let's keep walking. And there's another cotton mouth coiled up behind the spider web, interestingly enough. Can't see him super well, but you can tell he is there. That's a beautiful snake. Look at that. Here's another baby cotton mouth. This one's got a recent meal. Look at that. Very healthy little guy. He's off to a great start. That is a really tremendous meal this guy has. You can see it's kind of sticking out his side there. And then it goes all the way to like right there. Very big meal that is certainly going to give this guy a huge advantage going into winter. Beautiful little snake. We'll leave him alone. And here we have yet another cottonmouth. That's a pretty big one. Once again, very dark. These western cottonmouths are different looking for sure than the ones we had back in Georgia. Lots of snakes out all of a sudden. So I actually just noticed you could see behind this guy. It's going to be very hard to show you, but there is actually another cottonmouth behind him. You can kind of see the dark shape back there. Two cottonmouths in this crack. Well, you all know the drill at this point. There's another one. That's number eight, including uh, one that I didn't get video of and the one that was back in the crack with the, uh, the last snake. There's a newt right there. There's newts everywhere. It's kind of ridiculous. Like I said, they're everywhere. There is another one right there that I didn't notice at first. Off that guy goes. And there is number nine. I think that's the seventh I've shown on video. Just coiled up right there. Look at this thing. He thinks he's a lizard. Completely dry, not even slightly damp, and there's a newt. This little guy is, uh, he's got a snail. It looks like he's actually like looking at it to try to eat it, but I don't know if a newt can eat a snail shell or not. I'd love to stick around and find out, but we have snakes to find. Well, that is number 10. This one had just crossed the road. Pretty quick 10 snakes in about, I don't know, an hour and a half since it stopped raining. Well, it's been a minute since we saw a snake, but I believe that is number 11, another baby cotton. I just come out here at night sometimes to just sit down here and just enjoy it. Listen to the frogs. Yeah. I didn't know they had lobsters in Illinois. <laughs> Look at that thing. Hey, okay, we got our uh, 
Is this only our second cottonmouth that was actually on the road? I think it is. Third? Third. Oh, yeah, the one that was going off the road. That's number 12. We're up to a dozen. And I, I think I've showed 10 of them, maybe. Caitlin, you're being chased. You gotta get out of there. You're in immediate danger. <laughs> it really is crawling straight towards you. That's funny. We have made it to the other end of Snake Road. 12 cotton mouths, I think. One rat snake. Am I forgetting any snakes? Lots of amphibians. Met some new people. And we're gonna turn around and do it again the other direction. What a little ripper! Well, we're on our way back down the road, and that's our first snake. Um, seems like activity's kind of died down since our initial pass, um, which might make sense because of how cool it is, but another little baby, very pretty. All right, well, we've been joined by Justin here, and we are currently making our way back to the car as the sun sets. Lots of cotton mouth so far, and not much else yet, but hopefully that will change tomorrow when it's much warmer. All right, we're back at it the next morning. Sun's out today, and uh, reportedly, this is pretty perfect weather to be walking the road. So after all that rain, a nice sunny day in October, I think we can probably expect to see some snakes. All right, well, here's our first new snake species of the uh, day. We did see two individual snakes that we saw yesterday afternoon too, but Justin found a little ringneck, the, uh, the first one that we've seen on this trip. I'm sure there'll be more at some point. There's our first ribbon snake here at Snake Road. You can see he's uh, partially obscured by the plants, but that's a great looking animal. New species for the list. Well, the sun is definitely out now, and the road is warming up and drying off. It seems like the snakes and the people are out, so hopefully we're in for some more snakes as uh, the day continues to warm up. There's a rough green. Oh, he's, he's got his head right here too, doing a little swiggity swoot. Very nice. Mike and Justin are photographing the green snake that we were looking at a second ago, but it's a lot more people out here today in the nice weather than there were yesterday, it seems, understandably. Walking in the rain is not for everybody, for sure. All right, so since we've seen a lot of people and not a lot of snakes, I guess now's a good time to talk about how like running into like-minded people at Snake Road is one of the things that's cool about it. Everyone's here to see the snakes and to see the awesome habitat. And I wanted to actually talk to Mike because he's been coming here so long and ask, what's, what's the craziest or funniest story you have when it comes to running into herpers at Snake Road? Well, I, you know, I run into herpers all the time here. Uh, I've met a lot of my friends here for the first time, and so it's not uncommon to run into people and say, oh, hey, it's yeah, you. Yeah, people you know. So that happens, but there's this one time, uh, it was, I think it was last year, I was walking down the road with buddies, as we do, you know, we're yeah. just walking and talking, and we pass uh, uh, a young lady who's coming the other way, and pass her, and then she t uh, calls from after we pass her, she's like, hey, you're that, you're that guy. Or something like that, you know. I, I know you, and uh, I turn around and she says, "I listen to your podcast on the way down here, and I recognize your voice. Aren't you you're like your name's like Chris Kringleton or something <laughs> like that?" So, so That's that was amazing. the first time somebody didn't identify me by my by face, your booming iconic my, voice yeah, from from the so much Pingle podcast. My booming iconic voice, which everyone should check out if you haven't already. <laughs> if you're not familiar with this guy, yeah. he's got. Thousands of, maybe not thousands, but hundreds of hours of great podcast content yeah. on it, on wherever you get your podcast. Yeah, well, so. thank you for that. But it yeah. was the first time somebody ever identified me by uh, my my voice. So, and then of course, all my friends were like calling me Chris Kringle <laughs> the rest of the, the, the trip. So, but uh, it was great. We got to talk to her, and she was actually a researcher, and she was I think working on butterflies and stuff. And awesome. I actually had a nice chat with her. Yeah, but, uh, and it's not just herpers that we were talking about this earlier. There's naturalists of all kinds that come to. Yeah to this place because it's it's renowned for mushrooms wildflowers scenery birds take your yeah. pick and and southern illinois and snake road specifically is a hot spot well there's our first uh, road snake of the day no sooner had i said we've seen more people than snakes 
it's actually actively chasing Caitlin again. What's up with this? I got kids. Yeah, hey. Caitlin, you've got kids and dogs. You need to get out of this thing's way. Do I? <laughs> no, actually, you don't have either of those things. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's a yearling cottonmouth for you. It's quite a bit bigger than the babies we've been seeing. And off he goes. Can you see it coming? There's another yeah, ribbon sink. Look looks at that like beauty. A piece of grass. Yeah. Justin with the eagle eyes. He's getting ready to cross that log. There he goes. Next cottonmouth. Well, that's a cool find. Mississippi green water snake. Mississippi green water snake. Is that he was just stretched out like that? Yeah, he's just been sitting there for a hot minute. Wow. There was that that guy. Get the biller. The... I didn't see any dillers. Oh, this thing was. He was really just hanging out. Many frogs. Oh, yeah. Cool, yeah. There's an abundance of food for them here. Yeah, exactly. What you got? What? Oh, it's a big one. Wow. This, this stretch of road is usually not real good for me. There you go. Green snake and cottonmouth. Oh, back to back. Oh, that's sweet. Thanks for pointing. Now he's doing the head uh, on the stick waving in the wind. Did you see that? Yeah, there we go. Cotton on the road. That's We've had three snakes in the last, like, three minutes, so. What do we have here, guys? What is it? Newt. A newt. A newt. A beautiful little newt, just chilling. Well, the day definitely seems to be winding down at this point. It's about 4 o'clock, and uh, we've met a lot of people seen a couple of snakes and had a good time but uh this little guy is uh the first snake we've seen in a while so yet another juvenile cottonmouth crossing snake road it's been a common sight this little crack is just cottonmouth central we've got oh, man, yeah. i've seen half a dozen just sitting right there at the, at the mouth of that that's so cool one last year fell off from the bluff up here somewhere well it seems like the cottonmouths are kind of having an activity push right now but uh, they had one around this time yesterday, so I guess it makes sense. All right, well, we ran into some viewers here, and uh, we we're looking at this cotton mouth with them. But uh, what brought you guys to Snake Road? How long have you been coming here? Six or seven years. We try to make the trip every spring and every fall. What's your favorite thing you've seen here? That's a hard question. <laughs> that green water earlier. Oh, that yeah. That yeah. We yeah. Saw, that, that's one of the ones that are up there. We're still hoping for uh, the that timbers and muds. Well, we're going to get back to it, but it <laughs> seems like snakes are actually still out this afternoon, even though it seems to be cooling off. Oh, here's another example here's of a, a cotton mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm here with Justin Michaels, who has joined us for the last couple of days. Good friend of Mike Pingleton and longtime internet friend of myself. This is actually the first time we've been able to get out in the field, and I've enjoyed it tremendously. But I wanted to ask Justin, you know, we talked a little bit with Mike about how one of the big aspects of Snake Road is the community. And I wanted to ask Justin, have you had any really cool experiences here regarding the people rather than just the snakes? Yeah, for sure. Um, many, but probably the standout is uh, getting to meet Gary Pinson many years ago when his two sons were young and uh, their first time down here and then getting to see them every year since and now getting to see his son's grown with now grandsons that are getting grown. And so see, and you've basically forward. made like lifelong friends with yeah. people that you've run into out here and watched their children grow up. Yeah, over the yeah, years. yeah. And it's like, and, and so it's a special connection that we have. It's, yeah. It, it's, and um, it all started right here where we are today, here, yeah. along with like, you know, very many, many people. people. Oh, it's many, not many. just isolated to these guys I've talked to today. This no. is, this is widespread throughout the community. I think, I think I met Mike here first and we're pretty close and, probably wouldn't happen without this place and yeah so there, there you have it i mean that's you know we we ran into probably we talked to two dozen groups of people today and you know exchanged yeah, yeah. exchanged and you names and, <laughs> yeah you know i ran into a bunch of viewers out here it was awesome meeting all of you guys so yeah. it's a great place for people to just come and meet people and not only learn about herping if you're new to it but to also yeah. experience you know one of the coolest places that we have here in the united states when it comes this to, to cool field place. herping it's special and uh, like, I know we didn't really find anything in this video that we don't find at home, but that's kind of beyond the point. The point is that, you know, you have this towering limestone bluff on one side that's hundreds of, what is it, 200 feet tall in I, places? I'm not sure. I would say it's, more than that. Yeah, maybe. it's huge. It's it's the scale of it you, you don't really realize until you're standing here looking at it. And then on the other side, you have 
the northernmost cypress swamps yeah. in the United States yeah. or, you know, classic southern, southeastern looking cypress swamps as we know them with it's, cotton mouths it's in them. special because this can be the northernmost point for some species, the southernmost point for some species, the eastern or westernmost point for some species. So it's kind of a hot. Bed. Yeah, it's everything comes together here in this little corner of mm -hmm. southern Illinois and yeah. it's fantastic. So, well, there you have it, guys. It's been a fantastic time here at Snake Road. It's just been enjoyable being in this place that I've been, you know, I've, I've known about it and seen pictures of it on the internet since I was a little kid, basically. And, it, and I've never had a terrible amount of interest in coming here just because I've seen all the other stuff that lives here. I've seen it before somewhere else. Um, so just coming here was mostly for the place rather than the snakes. And it, it hasn't been a disappointment. The scenery is incredible. It's really cool to see so many people from the community out here getting along and enjoying the same place. Everybody is has been very ethical and very respectful of the place and the animals that we've run into. And it's great to see. I hope everybody has enjoyed our first video from the legendary Snake Road. You guys know I love Southern Illinois, and in fact, we spent a few more days in the area after visiting Snake Road, and that will be coming up in future videos. It seems like activity wasn't that great. I know we found a lot of snakes in this episode, but that's just how it is there. There's snakes, and that's part of what makes it so cool. It's just the density, the diversity, even if it is a lot of widespread and mostly common species, being able to see these numbers of snakes is really, it's a special thing in this day and age as the habitat for animals like this continue to dwindle. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next episode where we will be doing some more herping in Illinois and Missouri. Thank you.